First off, we're going to build the bot on the Discord developers applications website. I'm going to call this Music Maniac. Check the terms of service, hit create. Uh, once it loads up, I'm going to select my music bot and set the description to I can't wait to jam in your server. Set the tag to music and save changes. The tag is arbitrary. It really doesn't matter because this is going to be your personal bot. Go to OAuth2 and select in-app authorization as the default authorization link. Select bot and grant it these permissions. All the ones in the text permissions and most of the voice permissions, leaving out video. And the rest is unnecessary. So select save changes, go to URL generator and select bot and select the exact same permissions. Copy your link and place it somewhere safe so that you can invite your bot to your server. And now finally go to the bot tab. You can scroll down and set these two privileged gateway intents as I like to do them for the purposes of the music bot. Then you're going to hit reset token. And once you've reset the token, it will generate your token right here. You can copy it and place that in another safe place. Now let's jump into Visual Studio and create the actual code. And here we are in Visual Studio code. We have our main PY and maniac PY, as well as .env. .env is a special file I will show you how to set up later. First off, uh, you need to do a couple things before we begin. First, you need to download FFmpeg from the official website, which is here. Select the version for Windows and go to gyan.dev and download the full 7-zip. I've already downloaded this and placed it on my desktop. Here it is in its full glory. You will want to extract the 7-zip using 7-zip and enter inside of here. Now in here, there are three different files, but our main focus is the bin folder. Take this bin folder where the exe is, and you don't have to place it in the C drive, but this is my preferred way of doing it. Name it FFmpeg, and you can cut or copy it and paste it into your C drive. And now the exe is easy to access, and you will now want to add FFmpeg to your environment variables. Go down to search and type env, and this should come up in the environment variables tab. Scroll down in the bottom part that says system variables until you see path. Then you will click edit and new and add it to the bottom here. I've already done so, so I could just hit OK and OK and OK. This has set FFmpeg as globally available to all software, and this is how it works locally. If you are working on a server, you will want to set the file path to FFmpeg and set it as an environment variable accordingly. Now we can begin our imports that we need. Open a new terminal inside of Visual Studio, type pip install dash dash upgrade. We will be repeating this line for async IO. Requirement already satisfied for me but not for you. pip install upgrade yt-dlp and pip install dash dash upgrade python dash dot env. These are all already installed for me, but once you install these, you are ready to begin. We will set up our main PY as most main PYs are set up, importing our necessary Python packages and saying if name equals main, then we will pass for now. Later, we will set this to run our main method within maniac.py. And here, I will import all that's necessary for our project. Discord OS, asyncio, ytdlp, and from .env, import load .env. Now, we can create our main method. We'll call it runbot. 
At the top, we will type load.env and run it as a method to load our environment variables. Now, this does not help us with the ffmpeg. That happens automatically. What this does do is load the environment variables from our .env. Let's talk a little about our personal environment variables within our project. Per the many comments saying that I should hide my token as it is publicly exposed in my videos, I am addressing this issue for anyone who does not want to reveal their token to the outside world. Instead of saying token equals uh, whatever your token is, you can set an environment variable. Install the python-.env package. Create a .env file within your project folder. And within your env, set your token. Do not set it like a string variable, as that will cause some unexpected errors. Just set it equal to whatever your token is, not surrounded by double or single quotes. Back inside of our Python file, after saying load.env to get the env file into memory, we will import os because we will use os get env and the name of our environment variable into here. And this is how to securely store your tokens locally. If you are running a server, you will want to do this differently. Set it as an environment variable within your cloud environment or server environment and adjust accordingly. Now that we have the token out of the way, we can set the client up intents equals discord dot intents dot default and i like to allow my bots to access the message content since we will be reading commands now we will say client equals discord client and pass the intents in you don't have to set the equal sign to intents it automatically will read it for you and our next step is to set up the voice clients dictionary. So clo open close curly braces for that. Then you will want to set your YTDL options to format equals best audio slash best. And there are way more options you could set. This is just the only one we're going to use for our purposes. And we will set a YTDL which is just our YTDLP setting the YouTube DL up to use our options, pass it in as a parameter. And now we have these little bits set up here. Do note that this is a tutorial on how to set the bot up, not a deep dive into what the concepts do, as I do not fully understand them myself. We will set the FFmpeg options here simply creating another little dictionary with a key value pair of options. And our option here is VN. What this does is it tells FFmpeg to grab audio only. In other words, VN standing for video none. I'm just kidding. I have no idea what this stands for, but it is the option we will use within our run bot. We need to say client event and let ourselves know when the bot is running on ready print client user which is our bot's name as a variable is now jamming now for the meat and potatoes of our video the client event async def on message at this point you will want to buckle your seat belts if you have one on your superior crusty gaming chair because we are about to get into the thick of it if the message content starts with question mark play meaning we're telling our bot to play the music we are going to try to set up a voice client await message author voice channel connect we're going to take this voice client and put it into our voice clients dictionary setting the key to the guild id of the voice client and the value to the voice client itself now this sounds quite complicated but 
Simply put, if this was a large scale bot, this basically checks that we are only controlling the bot within our server. Otherwise, these commands would run for every single bot instance that we have in other people's servers. Now we finish our try accept statement by placing our accept statement and we will simply print the error if anything bad happens. Now we will start another try catch method. The reason we are doing this outside of this try catch is so that our voice client is not reset every time we type play. Otherwise, we would get nasty errors that take too long to debug and honestly do not make fun content here because we have verified that the message indeed does start with play. We are going to split the message content and take the final half. As you know, arrays start with zero in Python. So this is the second half after play. Should a user have provided a space between the play command and the link, which is the proper use of our bot. Next, we finally use async IO by setting a loop variable to the async IO get event loop. What this does is it allows the bot to run and play music at the same time as other things happening, reducing the load on the bot overall. Again, understanding the ins and outs of this is not quite as important as getting the bot working. That being said, I have copied a line from my GitHub as this is really complicated to type out, and I will explain what each little part does. Data, of course, sets our data variable. We await the asynchronous function run in executor, pass in none because we have no executor set with a Lambda function. But this just extracts the information from the URL passed in, denoted here, and telling the YouTube DL not to download the song, essentially setting the data variable to the data from the video. I don't quite know what data actually becomes on a lower level, but I do know that it's required for us to play music. Next, we're going to set song data URL because I believe data is a JSON response. and This is the key needed to set our song to the proper value. And now we set our player to Discord FFmpeg PCM audio, passing in the song and FFmpeg options, which appears to have a warning because I misconfigured my variable up here. Now that that's fixed, finally we can get our voice clients uh, referred to by the same ID as before, using play, passing in player. And all of this code comes together nicely to make our bot play the music. And now we must finish out our try except using the same method as before. And now we are ready to test the bot. So inside of here, we could say maniac run bot, select play, and init takes one positional argument, but two were given. What? This error makes absolutely no sense to me, so I'm going to try to set intents equal to intents and see if the thing runs better. Silly me, I forgot to actually run the bot. At the very bottom, we will want to say client run token, and that should do it. Now we can run the bot, and test music bot is now jamming. Enter our family-friendly Christian Minecraft server, and I enter general. I myself am muted because I am recording a video, and I don't want my voice replicating. We could type question mark play, and the bot will join. And begin playing music. But now we need to actually add functionality wait, to be able to pause the bot. Otherwise, he will just be stuck in voice playing forever. So we could check our message content. If it starts with pause, then we can try voice clients, message guild ID, pause, and set our exception as usual.
And now we could copy paste this twice more to set up our other commands, which are resume. Set both of these values to resume the starts with and the command, as well as stop. And we will also want to leave the voice chat or tell our bot to rather once we tell him to stop playing the music. And now we should have a fully functioning bot that plays whatever music we request. Let's run our bot and see what he can do. And once we type stop, he leaves the call, which is exactly what we intended for him to do. I know this was a lot to take in, but in the end, it is 100% worth it. If you have any errors, feel free to comment below. Let me know, and I will help you troubleshoot them. If you found this video useful, consider liking and subscribing because that really helps my channel grow. As you can see, I am a wee lad trying to grow here on YouTube provide value to my audience, and just have a good time coding. I can't wait to learn with you on the next video. Until then, keep on coding.